We thank you, Lord, for the very word of God that you've given us this afternoon, and we thank you for moving in our lives, oh, Father, meeting the needs of our lives, and Father, we thank you for your grace is sufficient in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. What a good thing for us to be in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, his words are true. We can trust his word wherever we go, whatever we do. His words always remain the same. We got to build ourselves up to the level where we could say, yes, I believe in you, I believe in you, I believe in you. The only thing that God wants us to do is to believe in him. I mean, that might be very simple, but then that's exactly what he wants. He wants us to believe his word. He wants us to believe what he said in his word. He doesn't want us to try to earn his blessings. We try to think, well, the best way is to earn God's blessings. As many religions teach, well, you've got to do this, that, and the other, and then you earn God's blessings. But that's not the way God wants you to earn his blessing. He wants you to believe and receive. He wants you to believe and receive. And the church has got so used to call believing, most of the believing that the church does today basically is referring to uh, probably uh, works plus believing. But God wants us to believe only. If you can believe, all things are possible. If you can believe, all things are possible. See, our, our believing matters a lot. Our believing matters a lot. If you believe that the blood of Jesus Christ has washed you and cleansed you and made you a brand new creature in Christ Jesus and your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, you don't want to see the book where your name is written. You believe that it's already settled in heaven. If somebody asked you what about your salvation, how would you know whether you're saved or not? You would say, I know that I know that I know that I know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Have you seen the book? No, I haven't seen the book. Then that means what? Well, I believe. What matters is what you believe in your heart. That's the most important thing. That's how we need to believe for everything in our life. Everything in our life. And say, Lord, I believe it's already done. Jesus bore 39 stripes upon his body on the cross. And we could say, yes, Lord, you bore all the stripes for me, Lord. It was not because you were punished for your sins. You were punished for my sins. Which means... As the psalmist says in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Forget not all his goodness. Forget not all his good. And then it goes on down the line. It says, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And also he says, Who forgiveth all our iniquities and healeth all our diseases. All, 100%. That's the reason we got to believe and say, yes, I know that Jesus bore all my sickness upon the cross. And I know that his body has carried everything on the cross. Let's go to the book of Isaiah and see this scripture very clearly where it talks about Jesus Christ. And Isaiah 53 and verse number 4, it says, we need to believe in what the word says than what our symptoms tell us, what we see in the natural. Faith believes what the word says. Unbelief always has to do with what you see in the natural. Faith believes whatever the word says. That's the reason we find that the centurion, he said, Lord, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. He didn't try to tell the, tell the master and say, okay, please come home, try to heal my child. No, no, no. He said, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. And Jesus was amazed and he looked around and he told all the disciples who followed him, I have not found this kind of faith in Israel. I have not found in Israel because there was so much of unbelief in Israel. Unbelief comes in only by by people trying to please God by every other means except by faith. I try to do everything that I could to please God except faith. And that's how unbelief was so much in 
Israel. And when, G, when the centurion came and said, Lord, speak the word only and my servant will be healed. You don't have to come under my roof. I know my servant is healed. I know my servant is healed. If you speak a word, that's good enough for me to believe. And that's how our life should be. Lord, your word is sufficient. I have a word from you and that's good enough to bring about deliverance or healing or prosperity or whatsoever I desire. Isaiah chapter number 53 and verse number 4. Surely he has borne all our griefs. That word griefs there also means diseases. He has borne he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. That word sorrows means pain. So he has carried our diseases and our pain. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. Verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. For everything that we have done, every act of iniquity in our life, transgressing the law, and God says... He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. All came upon Jesus so that I might receive healing into my body. There is no way that God could say, well, you have sin in your life, that's the reason I can't heal you. Because Jesus already healed us. He's already taken away all our sin. So when the devil comes over your life and say, you can't be healed because of this sin that is in your life, you say, he has forgiven all my iniquities and he has healed all my diseases. See, we got to stand with the word when the devil comes and says, because of this, that, and the other. You know, every one of us, we have, even after our Christian walk, even after, even after we have accepted Jesus, Lord of our life, we have made mistakes in our lives. We have made mistakes that nobody who has never made a mistake in his life. But Jesus paid it all. Jesus paid it all. When the devil comes and condemns you and says, you can't be healed because of this in your life, because of what you have done. You, you have no right to be healed. You tell the devil, Jesus has carried my sickness and as well as he has taken away all my sin. If he has taken all my sin, then he has taken away all my sicknesses. So he was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. That's the word of God. Take healing medicine into your life. That's, that's the medication of God's word. Every day of your life, you say, Lord, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's a good man. You can never take an overdose of the medication of God's word. You can never take an overdose of God's medication. You can always say, I thank you, Lord. From the head to the tip of my toe, I'm healed. I'm healed. I'm healed because I believe the word of God says healing belongs to me. Healing is children's bread. Have you ever realized when the woman, the Syrophoenician woman, she came to Jesus and said, well, you, uh, you need to heal my daughter. And, and Jesus didn't even answer. And Jesus turned around finally and said, okay, I don't, I, don't throw my, I don't throw children's bread to the dogs. She said, I don't care even if, it, even if the crumbs, I'm willing to take the crumbs because I know there's enough power in the crumbs. So healing medicine, Jesus refers to as children's bread. You're a child of God. That's medicine for you. Healing is children's bread for you. You can always say, I thank you for healing. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the healing. Rejoice. God wants you to be physically well. He wants you to be strong. He did all this just that you and I may be healed. You might say, what about so and so? What about so and so? Well, God knows people try, to, people try to put their faith in people. What about so-and-so? What about so-and-so? Well, what about Jesus? He bore my sins. He bore my sicknesses. And the Bible says, consider Jesus. He didn't say consider people. He said, consider Jesus. The apostle and the high priest. Consider Jesus. Let's go to that scripture. Go with me to the book of Hebrews. We're talking about faith, building our faith up, speaking words of faith out of our mouth. 
living a lifestyle of faith, enjoying the very power of God in our life, if you have faith, all things are possible. All things are possible. There is nothing impossible. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. 